This week on Game Pro News, Australia takes another huge step towards finally seeing an adult rating for video games. We get our first glimpse at Grand Theft Auto V, Dead Island developer Techland registers a new and interesting trademark, pro gamers delay the beta test for Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and Origin will officially sell non-EA titles while Battlefield 3 is officially the quickest selling game in the company's history. DC Universe Online comes out a winner after going free to play, two new games get holiday season revamps, Tom Clancy's back with a new Rainbow Six, and Gearbox Software surprises everybody with a tribute to a fan. Hi, I'm Jessica Citizen. Australia could be just a couple of months away from receiving an adults-only R18 rating for video games, with all of the state and territory attorney generals approving the final guidelines required for the introduction. The changes made to the draft guidelines released in May have primarily focused on violence and coarse language, with some changes also made to the way sex and prescribed drugs can be used in-game. The MA15 Plus rating has been amended slightly, while the new R18 classification permits virtually unrestricted themes and language, in-game nudity and drug use, as long as it's not related to incentives or rewards, simulated sexual activity and non-gratuitous exploitative or offensive violence. Once the changes have been approved in Parliament, the Classification Board can start labelling games as R18 Plus immediately, and the usual two-year waiting period for reclassification will be waived. This basically means that the handful of games that have squeaked awkwardly into an MA15 Plus classification, not mentioning any names, will be reconsidered and given a much more fitting adult rating. Because the legislation didn't quite make it into the 2011 parliamentary year, Aussies must now twiddle their thumbs until February 2012, when the law will be taken to the government. In not completely unrelated news, Rockstar Games took the wraps off of Grand Theft Auto V with a stunning trailer that seems to have raised more questions than it answered. Were the... Ah, I don't know, that thing, that magic... You see it in the movies. I wanted to retire from what I was doing, you know? From that, that line of work. Be a good guy for once, a family man. So, I bought a big house, came here, put my feet up, and thought I'd be a dad like all the other dads. My kids would be like the kids on TV. We'd play ball and sit in the sun, but, well, you know how it is. The game is headed to the city of Los Santos, as well as the surrounding countryside, mountains and beaches in a game world rumoured to be more than twice as large as recent Rockstar effort Red Dead Redemption. GTA V is currently in development at series creator Rockstar North, but that's about all the facts we know at this time. Something else we don't really know much about is Dead World, a new trademark registered by Techland. They're the developers behind this year's zombie holiday, Dead Island, and by putting two and two together, we're wondering if this might be a large-scale sequel to the game. Techland, of course, refuses to comment on rumour, speculation or trademark filings, but if that's how it pans out, we wouldn't be disappointed. That said, if you'd been looking forward to Counter-Strike Global Offensive, you probably will be sad to hear that the beta for the game has been pushed back, potentially into 2012. It seems the team at Valve gave an early version of the game to a bunch of pro gamers who are well placed to not only figure out what works and what doesn't, but also to voice those emotions and provide valuable feedback to the developers. Unfortunately, a lot of that feedback was about the game not really being anywhere near ready for public scrutiny just yet, meaning that Valve have had to take the game back home and get out the bug spray. It's not known at this stage whether this will delay the final version of the game, originally rumoured for the first half of 2012, but when the official due date is announced, we know that the game will be ready. Speaking of Steam, that's where you'll be able to find Postal 3 in less than a month. Running with Scissors has decided that five years in development is probably enough, and is bringing the game to PC on December 10th. 
Now, before you get too excited, while we were promised that this would be the first outing for the franchise on console, at this stage it's still PC only. And PC gamers should pay attention to the digital distribution wars which are about to heat up. While Steam is certainly the winner at this stage, EA's version, Origin, is gaining speed. This week, the company announced that, despite promising not to become a Steam competitor, it would soon start selling games from other publishers. Capcom, THQ and Warner Brothers have all jumped onto the service with an assortment of games headed our way soon, including Batman Arkham City and Saints Row the Third. Origin is still going through some teething problems, but when they work, the servers are quick and a little competition never hurt anybody. Still with EA, there are some celebrations in Sweden this week as Battlefield 3 is crowned the company's quickest selling game ever. In just one week of sales, Battlefield 3 has sold more than 5 million copies, bringing home the record. Raise another glass while you're at it, guys. The service stability for this launch was miles ahead of any previous Battlefield release, despite intermittent outages due to heavy load. With 98.9% stability across the launch weekend, the game saw EA's highest ever usage rates, suggesting that the lengthy beta periods really helped the development process. We don't have a specific breakdown of the sales numbers at this stage, but the game has sold considerably more on Xbox 360 than it has on PS3. Make of that what you will. Also huge this week, DC Universe Online, which took the huge leap from premium to a tiered free-to-play system. The MMO, which is available on both PC and PS3, made the shift on November 1st, and in the few days since has seen more than 120,000 new users. Whether or not they stick around is a different question, but right now concurrent users are up 400%, suggesting that the free-to-play experiment is paying off. You'd think by November most publishers would have announced all of their holiday treats and specials. Not so. This week we learned about a delightful pair of re-releases that are just begging to be put on your wish list. Heavy Rain is getting a developer's cut, including deleted scenes, the soundtrack from Normand Corbeil, move support, making of videos, trailers, concept art, and three dynamic themes for PlayStation 3. That one's out mid-November exclusively for PS3. Fallout New Vegas, on the other hand, is being revamped into an Ultimate Edition, which features the game as well as all of the DLC released to date, including the big stuff and the smaller add-ons like Courier's Stash. It's out for all three platforms in February. Team Rainbow is back, not in a re-release, but in the first new game for the franchise in three years, Patriots. We haven't seen much of this one yet, but it's all about a very different sort of terrorism. The threat in this one comes from within the United States. A group calling themselves the True Patriots believes that the American government has been corrupted by corporate special interest groups and the inevitable greedy politicians, and they will do anything to reclaim their country. As Team Rainbow, you guessed it, it's up to you to stop this new breed of terrorists making all the tough decisions thrown at you. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Patriots is in the works at Ubisoft Montreal, and it's due out in 2013. And finally, while we see plenty of tributes from adoring gamers addressed to their beloved developers, this week Gearbox Software sent a touching message to a Borderlands fan. After Carlo's friend Michael lost his battle with cancer, Carlo decided to contact the Borderlands developer with a simple request. He wanted to know if smart Alec robot Claptrap could please read a short eulogy for his friend. Gearbox went above and beyond, recording a message from both Claptrap and the studio staff, ending with the company raising a glass to their lost comrade. That's the above part. The beyond bit will be properly unveiled next year when Borderlands 2 hits shelves and Michael John Mamriel is included within the game as an NPC. Not bad for the company who brought back Duke Nukem. Till next week, I'm Jessica Citizen and this is GamePro News.